Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Brawl Battle, and in this episode we'll be discussing about player stats. In any Roblox game you can think of, when you join the game, uh, there's going to be a leaderboard player stat on, on the top right of the screen that shows your name and other people's names. And sometimes the developers, what they decide to do is, they decide to have stats displayed for everybody to see to know other players' progress. Like for example, uh, how many wins you have in a game, uh, the amount of currency you have in a game, uh, and just things like that. Like if we if we hit play test and then we and we join in, we can see that there is a player leaderboard on the top right of the screen by default. Now it's not going to look like this for every single Roblox game, but generally this is how a default leaderboard looks like. And it's put inside of every Roblox game you can ever imagine, unless the developer decides to modify it or just plain up remove it. That's cool and all. Roblox has provided us a leaderboard, but what if we wanted to add our own stats to it? And so I think player stats is something very practical that a lot of developers need to at least learn about. Okay, so let's go to the right side, uh, disable our script, and let's create a new script here. We are going to call this uh, leader stats. Okay, now before we start programming custom stats for our leaderboard, uh, there's something I forgot to talk about in my tutorial series that I should have talked about in probably right in the very beginning, and that is the use of creating new instances. So to describe what an instance is, it's basically just like any object that you can find inside of the explorer, uh, whether that is viewable in the 3D workspace, like, uh, like some of the parts we have here, or uh, maybe some attributes or maybe some other types of objects that, that are stored in some of our other uh, categories inside of our game, like server storage or starter GUI, for example. Um, those are called, those are basically examples of instances. It's basically just another way of saying that this is an object that we have that's contained inside of the game. And now that you know that, obviously you know how to add new instances to the game through Roblox Studio. That's just by uh, clicking on the plus sign and then just adding whatever you want to add into uh, studio inside of the workspace or anywhere else inside of the game. But another thing we can do is there's another way of adding instances to the game and that's through scripting itself. So we're actually able to add objects into the game through scripting. That's one piece of information you need, you need to know about is that we can add new instances through scripting and I'm going to show you how. So let's delete this print statement here and this is the structure of how you create a new instance. So we're going to say local new Let's say part equals, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to type in a capital I instance. It's basically a infrastructure that allows us to create a new part when we say instance dot new, when we call their method that we're trying to create a new instance. And then we're going to put in open parentheses and close parentheses. And inside of here, what we're going to do is we're actually, this is going to be a class name. And uh, this class name is basically the instance that we're trying to create is called. Like if we want to create a new part, then we're going to, in quotations, because this is a string, we're going to be creating a part, just saying part like this. Uh, so great, now we've created the part. But how are we going to uh, put it inside of our actual game? Because we've created the part, but we're not doing anything with the part. We haven't moved it anywhere and there's no location for it. So what we have to do is we have to drop a line, say new part dot parent. And so basically what this means is that parent is a property of our uh, part instance. And so when we specify what the parent of this uh, instance that we created is, that's where it's gonna be located inside of the game. So let's say for example, we create a new part and then we set its parent to workspace, then the part is going to be thrown inside of here, inside of workspace, because that's what we set the parent of the part to. So we say new parent equals game dot workspace. That's what we say. And uh, uh, we might as well give the part a name too. So you know how when you go to the right side, we can create a name for the part. So over here, we're just gonna do the same thing, but instead in our script. So we're gonna say new part dot name equals, and a name is usually a string value. So we're going to put in the double quotations and we're going to call this new part instance. That's what we're gonna call that. And then if we go into the game, hit test, hit play, then inside of our workspace, we should see a new part that has been created uh, because it's not here, but inside of our workspace, it should be located here. Uh, I don't know exactly where the part is. 
Okay, so the part is located inside of here, but yeah, it, you can't really see it, so that's why I'm just going to move it like this. But yeah, anyways, uh, a new part has been created through our script, and as soon as we run the game, the script executes, uh, telling it to create a new part, set its parent to game.workspace, and renaming it. Because on the Explorer, we can see that the part is named new part instance, which is exactly what we wanted it to happen. So that's instances, that's creating new instances, which I forgot to mention uh, earlier inside of the series. But now that I've mentioned it to you, it makes more sense and it's more fitting to what we're about to do with leader stats. Okay, now there's another piece of information you need to know before we actually start creating leaderboard uh, stats. So the next thing you need to know about is that in one of the first episodes of this beginner's tutorial series, I taught you about basic data types. Like we have strings, which which look like this. You have uh, double quotations and you put whatever inside of here, which is basically just a string of characters. Uh, and then we have numbers, which is basically just numerical values. And then we have booleans, which are just basically true and false. And these are the three data types that I showed you. We are creating data types inside of our script, but Another thing that's possible is that we can actually create instances of of uh, of data types as an object or an instance in this case inside of the Explorer. So what I mean is, is that inside of our workspace here, let's click on the plus sign, but this time we're going to search up, let's say a Boolean value. So Roblox has given us an assortment of objects that replicate uh, these said basic data types that we create inside of our scripts, but instead it's an object form. So we have a boolean here. We have a boolean value here, which is just named value. We're gonna call this uh, check mark. And uh, as you can see, each data type object has its own sort of value. So for this value, it's a check mark because, as you know, a boolean value is either true or false. And so if we go to workspace and create, let's say, an integer value, it's just called int value. Uh, this represents a number uh, where instead for this value, we could just pick a number uh, that's like any integer that's not a decimal. So like we can say 10, we can say five, but for our check mark, it's uh, but for our check mark, it's specifically uh, a Boolean value, which is either true or false. So like I mentioned, these are basically object forms of basic data types that we've created in the script. But now what we can do is, we can actually create these values, uh, these object values, and put them inside of our leaderboard. And I'm about to show you how in a second. Okay, so let's delete these. Uh, and I kind of lied a little bit. There's actually a third piece of information you need to know about before we uh, create leader sets. So if we play the game, then what's going to happen is that our character spawns into the game and we are counted as one player who joins in on the game. And on the right side of the screen on the Explorer, uh, we have a players category inside of our game. So as you know, we've messed around with the workspace. This is the 3D view where you see uh, all the contents in the game. But on players, this is not viewable inside of the actual game. And players is a specific folder that shows you all of the different players that are inside of the game with their own attributes and their own features that make them unique from other players. So every player has a backpack, which is uh, all the items that you have down here. All the players have starter gear, which uh, we don't need to get into that right now. Uh, we all have a uh, player GUI and we all have player scripts. But essentially, we all also have a leader stat up here, but Roblox by default doesn't put that inside of uh, each of our players. We have to add that manually. And the way we're going to add it manually is through scripting. So those are all the three pieces of information you need to know about when we're creating uh, leader stats. So now let's actually create them. So inside of our leader stats script, what we're going to do is, uh, if you remember about events, uh, we're going to be creating an event that fires every single time a player joins the game. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say game.players, and now this makes a little bit more sense of why we're talking about players is because we need the event to fire whenever a new player joins the game and a new player is added to the players category. So we're going to say game.players.play, oh, game.players.player added dot or no sorry uh colon connect and then with the open parentheses function uh, i really need you to practice uh typing in event signatures because they are a little bit confusing at first but they it, it but they do make sense uh the more you type it out so we're going to say function here we're going to delete uh this end statement and then we're going to oh and then we're going to add in our two parentheses right here and then hit enter and then uh, we're going to add in our player as our argument. Okay, so now that we have our player argument inside of here, whenever a new player joins the game, what we're going to do is we're going to add a leader stat folder to each player that joins the game. And um, 
And basically what a folder looks like is that if you, if you click on workspace and then uh, let's type in folder. A folder is basically just a container uh, where you can add other things into it just to make it more organized, you know? that Like, it's pretty self-explanatory what a folder is. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to add a new folder that's going to act as the leader stat for every player. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to type in local leader stats equals, and remember how we create a new instance. We're going to say instance dot new and this time what we're going to do is the class we're going to create is a folder not a part this time so we're gonna put the double quotations and then we're going to say folder and then what we're gonna do here is we're going to now that we have created the object we actually need to put it inside of each player so the way we're gonna do that is we're going to drop a line and then we're gonna say leader stats dot parent equals player so basically we're going to create a new folder. The location of where this folder is going to take place in is inside of the player that joins the game. And we're also gonna put in a name for uh, the leader stats. And this is very important. Otherwise, if you don't have a name for this, then it's not gonna work. We have to be very specific with this name. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say leader stats dot name, oh, sorry, name equals, in double quotations, make sure leader stats is in all lowercase. We're going to say leader stats. That's what we're gonna say. Okay, so if we go back to the game, hit play, then what we should see is that whenever I join the game, because I am a player, go to the players tab, go to my player, and then as we can see, we have a leader stats folder, but currently there's nothing in that folder. So how we're actually going to add stats is through adding in object versions of basic data types like I explained earlier in the video. So for example, we can add booleans, we can add integer values, we can add strings, whatever it may be. So what we're going to do is now we're actually going to put content inside of the leader stats folder so that we can actually see it inside of the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit local and let's create a new value. Let's say we're going to call this one coins. How about that? That's going to be our in-game currency. So we're going to say local coins equals instance.new because we're going to create a new object instance.new with the parentheses and quotations. We're going to say uh, we want to add an int value, which is basically a number value. Uh, so we're going to and then we're going to locate the coins value into uh, our leader stats folder. So we're going to say coins.parent equals not player, we want it inside of the leader stats folder specifically. We're gonna give the the coins value a default value, which is just gonna be zero. So we're gonna say coins dot value equals zero. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to give it a name because um, right now we've added the value, but we actually haven't renamed the value yet. So we're gonna say coins dot name equals in quotations, we're gonna say capital C coins. So now let's go back into the game and hit play. And let's see what happens. When we join the game, then we should be able to see that on the top right, uh, my character has the value coins because for every single player that joins the game, uh, every stat that's put inside of our new leader stats folder is going to show up inside of our leaderboard. That's how adding leader stats to a player's leaderboard works inside of pretty much any Roblox game, unless you decide to add your own custom leaderboard, then you're gonna have to change it accordingly. But generally, this is how you add leader stats on a default Roblox leaderboard. All right, but now let's say we want to change the value. Um, let's give a timer. Uh, for every second, the coins value is going to go up every single second. What we're going to do is we're going to write a, a while true do statement so that as long as the game's running, the coins value is always going to increment um, every single second. So what we're going to do is we're going to say while true do, we're going to drop a line, and then we're going to say coins dot value. And if you remember how to increment values, you have to say plus equals one. So that means uh, the coins, the coins value is going to increment every single time. Now, here's something you have to be careful about. You can't just say coins because coins is an object and an object has the value that you need to actually modify, but it's not the object itself you're trying to modify. It's the value. The, the value is a property of the object. So if you remember, if I create another uh, integer value uh, inside of the workspace, um, int value is an object, but value is a property of that object. 
So what you're trying to look for is the value of that object and not the object itself. So that's why you have to say coins.value. You can't just say coins. So you have coins.value plus equals one. So that means uh, whatever value the coins is, we're going to increment it by one every single time. And now we're going to drop a line and put a wait statement on here to wait every one second to where the coin is just going to keep automatically incrementing every single second. So now let's uh, go back to the game, hit play. And what should happen is that the coins value should increase every single second. As you can see up here, my coins value is incrementing every single second. If I open up my uh, player inside of the players category and look at my leader stats, you can see that the value is automatically incrementing on its own without me doing anything with it. So that's going to be it for player leader stats. Um, for the learning objective, you can you can make other values inside of the player. Like you can have more than one value by um, dropping a few lines down here. Or actually, no. Let's just get rid of this while true do statement. You can you can just copy and paste uh, this into here, and then you can create even more values to have more than one value inside of your uh, leaderboard stats. So go crazy with it. You can make a time played. You can make. Um, I don't know, you can make a secondary currency, you can make a rank with a with a string value, you can make a check mark that says, um, has this player joined the game before? Like, the possibilities are endless, you can do whatever you want with it. So that's gonna be it for today's learning objective. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.